Hello, my name is Gelly, and today I will be teaching you 60 FPS any percent categories for Talos in terms of Messenger and Eternalize, the, the very short sort of categories. Uh, I will be assuming that you're starting from the bottom, that you don't know anything about the game. If there are things that you do know, feel free to skip ahead, it's totally cool. Uh, so first I will be going through the options of the game, sort of the things that are important in terms of the basic th things that you'll need to have set and not set for uh, speedrunning, and then we'll go into the actual game, the strategies that are involved, the techniques that are involved, so on and so forth. Uh, you'll note that for every sigil there are multiple strategies there are the anything from intended which is super easy but super slow to very sort of high ranking strats uh so-called syro or craft strats um it it's whatever your speed allows you to try all of them but if something doesn't work then try the the next best thing in terms of saving time so uh, let's get right into it let's go into the the options of the game that are important so first we'll go into the motion sickness options. The only thing that's super important is that player speed is fast. Um, as a personal preference, field of view is 120. It doesn't super matter, but it lets you see more things in theory. Uh, as for player speed being fast, the reason that this is important is that while player speed does not affect how you sprint, uh, sprinting is the same speed across all player speeds, it does affect how you move left, right, and backwards. So as much as we move forwards in the game we also do hold left hold right hold backwards in order to do certain things so it's important that your player speed is fast for this sort of thing otherwise everything else is on the table you can go ahead and personalize it to however you choose for keyboard and mouse there's a couple of things that you'll need for tallow speed running in general nothing is necessary but it's definitely nice to have these things um, i have mouse wheel down or scroll down also mapped to jump I use this for buffer jumps, which we'll get into later. If you're a source runner who's done ABHing and, and the like, you'll also understand why having scroll to jump is a sort of nice thing. I don't think many other members of the community have jump bound to scroll, uh, so it's not necessary, but it's a nice sort of convenience to have uh, as a second jump button that you can have on your other hand. Uh, for alternative use, uh, this is not used too much in this category again, but it is used in other categories. It's uh, for personal preference, it's R because it's next to E uh, on the keyboard. Alternative use is used for connectors and, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's used in the all sigils and all sigils 60 categories for, for certain puzzle solves that make it super easy. Uh, you don't need it in this category, so you don't have to have it set, but if you do plan on speedrunning Talos in other categories in the future, make sure to have that set to R, and it's not too hard to change it now as it is. Toggle Sprint. Um, there are a lot of people who believe that Toggle Sprint is slow, they're wrong. Uh, it's a weird divide in the community whether or not Toggle Sprint is, is slow or makes you a nerd or... I don't know, I'm not too, too certain. Um, but I was taught by Azure to use toggle sprint, so that's what I use. It's the convention that I use. Uh, it saved me a lot of uh, having to hold down shift with my pinky, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, if you if you like that sort of convenience and luxury on your hands, uh, set toggle sprint to, to like V. V is the probably the best key to use because it's your thumb uh, when you're resetting checkpoints and so on and so forth, when you're just starting the game. So you just hit V with your thumb in order to start sprinting and you don't have to worry about sprint anymore. One last thing is reset, which is X. Um, we don't really use X drops in this category, but um, having a convenient reset uh, button is super is super good for a lot of other categories. Community percent, I know, uses it a billion times. Uh, all sigils uses it a lot, uh, so on and so forth. So use whatever key is comfortable with you. Just note that when people say the term X drop, they're basically saying reset drop. So if you want to set X to mouse button alternate four or something like that to make it convenient for you, go ahead. It's totally cool. Uh, so that's pretty much it for keys. Um, for sound options, I will have the voice volume off because Elohim is annoying and stupid and dumb. You don't have to you can totally have him on this is all up to you i'm just telling i'm explaining why he'll be silent for the entirety of of this tutorial uh, in terms of language this is a 
a minor point. If you do plan on going for top runs, make sure to have te uh, text set to either simplified or traditional Chinese. These are the fastest on terminals for the Talos main game, and also like basically any other DLC that supports it, like Gehenna as of recently, and some community maps. It's because there are terminals in the game, and you need your text to scroll as fast as possible to get the to the next option. So anytime you're using a terminal, uh, which will be in these categories on a technica uh, technically, but it saves maybe a second at most out of either category and like 0.1 in Messenger. If you're more concerned with your sanity and being able to read things, start with English. It's totally cool. It doesn't, it's not going to cost you a world record, but it will help. And as for voice, uh, set it to um, Italian. It's a, it's a good language. As for performance, <laughs> sorry. Um, as for performance, right, this is super important if you have a crappy computer, and I have had a crappy computer, so I know the deal. CPU speed, lowest. No, you don't you don't get to you don't get to set it to, to really anything else if you want a, a high uh, FPS, especially if your computer sucks. If you do have a better computer, you can set it to low, which helps with something near the end of the run, which I'll explain. Um, I do not set it to low because it's it's what I'm most comfortable with in terms of how the game operates. Uh, but I will show it on low for the thing that's important that kind of maybe sort of saves a little bit of time. For GPU, I haven't set it to lowest. Uh, my one customized is render crumbs, which is important for a single setup and community percent, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you want to try to save a little bit of FPS or get used to how community percent looks or something along those lines, turn off render crumbs uh gpu memory lowest again you don't want to have textures be dumb and stupid level caching uh as someone who's had a crappy computer in the past i have had very bad fps when i've had level caching set to ultra i've had many computer nerds in the community tell me that that's impossible you're dumb and you're wrong if you're still not hitting 60 and you have all these settings, try setting this to none and see if you can get away with it. Because that might be the difference. Uh, I, I can't confirm or deny, but having level, level caching set to ultra does save on load times. And considering we have a timer that uh, removes all loads, so every time is now uh, in-game time, uh, thanks to me. Uh, you're welcome. I'm the reason that that's the case. Um, this will reduce load times, but it's not super important unless you plan on doing a lot of runs in a row and you want to save mental time and whatever, so on and so forth. This is just a really nice thing to have. And max FPS is set to 60. Uh, there's not really anything in any of these sort of things. Um, we do have show FPS put on, and I'll you'll see this in, in the corner here. Um, this is an anti-cheating measure, so it'd be really super nice if you could have that on. Thank you very much. It also uh, lets you know whether or not your FPS is, is good 60 or bad 60. You'll note that I have blue, which means good 60 or it's like a stable 60. Green means it's, it's unstable. That occasionally happens when you're just loading into a level. Uh, having green 60 is, 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 a, is, a, is a problem for some sorts of things, uh, which will maybe get into anything that's fps dependent and having a green 60 is probably not cool uh, but if you don't get green 60 in the game it's not a problem uh and one more thing i will be showing off cheats um i have uh b uh cheat b enable cheats set to three three is developer cheats it lets you do a bunch of cool stuff which helps with practice and demonstrations and so on and so forth um, we don't allow this in runs uh, even if you have cheats enabled in in the run and then you turn them off it'll say cheats enabled anyway because they don't want you to to like do to like collect a sigil that you wouldn't normally be able to collect and then turn off cheats and say oh yeah it's totally fine um, we don't allow that we don't tolerate it we don't just don't just don't do it uh for practice do cheats fantastic it's awesome it's great it it it, it saves so much time when you mess up something that would require doing like 60 seconds of setup for but that's how you enable cheats um if you need to uh like enable connectors which is really the only thing that's sort of important for any percent uh but you don't want to have to 
do uh, flying around to, to get all the yellow sigils. Um, cheat B, allow all puzzle mechanics equals one. Uh, we'll get you uh, all that you need with that. But we are we don't need that. We'll be collecting connectors as we need. So anyways, that's all the options. That's all the orders. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Let me go back to the keyboard and mouse sort of thing as a rule. Uh, if you spent the effort into reading the rules, I know I haven't, but uh, if you're one of those people, you'll notice that there is a fast forward thing, and fast forward is banned. Uh, it just is. Just don't do it. Like, if you accidentally hit it, that happens. It, uh, it doesn't totally invalidate your run, especially if you're not, like, going for a world record pace run. But if you do go for a world record pace run and you hit F, you, no, it's, it's just not going to be accepted. So just, just, just keep your fingers aware of that. Don't, don't, uh, don't touch F or whatever you set that to. Uh, a, a cool thing to do is to, like, set, look down to F. And then you don't have to worry about fast forward because there's nothing left to fast forward. I need fast forward because I need to go fast for showing stuff off. So I'm totally cool in the clear there. Anyways, let's let's get around to actually playing the game. We've we've hit the settings. We've, we've taken 11 minutes to explain that. Let's play the game. So, new game. Hold use, and if you if you do toggle sprint, uh, hit V. Otherwise, hold shift and run. Let's get going. So, we already start with a sort of divergence of strats uh, when it comes to getting onto the walls here. There's, there are three ways to get on the walls in 60 FPS. Actually, I believe there are four. No, that's not available in 60. No, never mind, don't listen to me. Uh, there are three ways. The first one involves jamming this barrier, going over to this bit of geometry here, and then using your parkour skills, making it onto the walls here. Um, you'll note that this is difficult. Uh, I agree, this is definitely not easy. This is going to be the hardest part of learning Talos, especially if you played it as a puzzle game. There is a lot of parkour. Uh, if, if, if parkour isn't your strong suit, but you still want to speedrun this game, uh, practice on this. Um, my recommendations for this particular piece of geometry is jump on the left side of this this sort of thing. Jump on the middle, you don't want to land on the left or right side for fear of falling off. And uh, for this sort of large hump here, you'll want to hold forward for a bit longer than you think you need to because this is a bit higher than you think it is. And then for making it across here, you want to stand near the middle of this and jump across. You'll get the those sort of tips and feels for every single bit of geometry that you'll be jumping on. Um, I can't give you everything. I'm not, uh, I'm not a psychic, I'm not a mind reader, I don't know how everyone plays this game. So, I mean, that's how I understand that bit of geometry over there. Maybe you'll understand it differently. We will use this geometry later, as you'll, as you'll see. Um, but get used to parkour, uh, because you will be using it a lot. Uh, get used to, to jumping on the walls. While I'm here, while I'm explaining parkour, I'm going to explain something called buffer jumps. Uh, so there's a lot of times when you want to land on a wall and you'll have such a small frame of time to jump off of it like that. Uh, let me get on the walls again real quick here. So the way a buffer jump works is exactly how it sounds. You buffer in a jump before you land it. So as you'll see here, um, I jump instantly when I hit this wall, and that's because I hit jump a slight bit before I landed. Uh, and I can demonstrate this a couple times here. You you have like a lot of leniency. Like listen listen to my keyboard here. I'll I'll do my best to be obnoxiously loud with my with my with my keycaps here. Uh, I'll do this a couple more times. I hope the audio disparity isn't like you can hit it that early. You can be maybe uh, I don't know. I, I don't know the timing as well, but listen to how early I can hold a jump and still get it to work. Um, buffer jump, jumping is super useful, as we'll see. Um, I, I missed the buffer there. Anyways, uh, now that we know buffer jumping, uh, practice parkour. Uh, if, you, if you're not super good at parkour, get to learn parkour with that strat. If you want to go a bit faster, you have two options. Uh, which are definitely faster, but they're both uh, awful in their own little special ways. Uh, first one I'm going to do is my personal favorite, and it's the one uh, Senan and I have elected to use in every sort of 60 FPS way. 
is something called the half clip. So you'll you'll pick up this jammer over here, you'll go into this corner, and I'm not going to be able to explain it with anything other than sort of hand wavy, just do it this way. You want to angle approximately like this, lift up a bit, and then you're going to you're going to drop the jammer and jump a bunch. And it works pretty consistently if you have a lot of practice with that. I know that that looked super easy. Uh, the hard part isn't jumping a bunch. The hard part is getting a good position first try. But you'll note that I get on the wall in four jumps pretty much, pretty much consistently every time. Uh, I have I have nothing to explain other than here's here's how I do it. Here's how it looks when I successfully do it. Uh, here's how it looks when I don't successfully do it. I'm still successfully doing. It. I meant to fail that, and it's still worked. I have a lot of practice with this strategy, unfortunately, so. I have no way to explain why this works other than it just does. So hopefully those sort of reference images of me uh, jumping half clipping will be good enough. If they're not, just do parkour. I don't blame you. Because this is an alternate. This is easier than something called Terrible Jump V2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to set it up here. What you want to do is you'll you'll see this sort of, sort of structure here. There's like this diamond, and there's black splotch. Sort of run at that black splotch. And then you'll see a white dot on the ground. So point at, point at that white dot here. So you'll want to be like behind-ish the white dot. And then what you'll want to do is something that's about as close to frame perfect as it gets. Um, you're going to want to jump and then drop immediately after. Like, I... I uh, it's... There's a reason that I do half clipping over this. It's because I have no consistency with this. Um, guys like Exto and Cyro and Crave will claim that with a lot of practice, this becomes second nature. Um, like that. So you, you see how I got popped on the wall here. It's called Terrible Jump V2 for a reason. Uh, it's just a lot of practice, I suppose. There's no other thing I can explain other than just jump, click, or whatever as much as you can. Try to get to learn it. Because it is. It's super fast. Half clipping, it involves jumping four times. Which you can tell, it takes a, a lot of time and a lot of precious resources in terms of speedrunning. And it's, it's dumb and stupid and really hard. But this is dumb and stupid and really harder. So, you know, it's the trade-off that you gotta sort of make. So you don't need the jammer. Don't, don't bother. Uh, in all of these cases, I pick up the jammer afterwards. You don't need it, but it's sort of a comfort object for me. I don't know. Anyways. Now you're on the walls, finally. You're, s you're somewhere on the walls here. I'll do it from here, because this is, this is the furthest away that you can get. Uh, there's two ways to make it from the walls onto uh, the, s the first sigil that we'll need. So if you do the math, there's technically six ways to do uh, a switch out of reach. So once you're on the walls here, you're going to make a decision between left and right. Uh, left is so-called OOB. OOB is super free. Um, the only thing that you're going to need to be careful of is you'll notice that there's this arch here. On the left side is death and pain. Just stay on the right side and you should be mostly fine. So if you see my way that I walk through it, it's a bit scary. But then you just make it to this corner and that's the scariest part of this. Just stay next to the wall. Cut it close here. And then you'll make it onto this geometry. Buffer jump off this wall. And bam, you're, you're good. You're in there. Uh, the other decision is to, is to go right, and this is so-called parkour. This is called A1 parkour, and it's it's hard. It's definitely hard. It's not something that uh, anyone would expect of a beginner to learn. I'll sort of demonstrate how it works and hopefully get it. Um, so you'll have to buffer jump off of there, which is a chore in and of itself. But once you land onto here, this is this is pretty good. This is pretty easy straight from here. Make it onto this slope here, do a couple buffer jumps, and make it onto this sigil. Um, I'll show it again, because it definitely is a lot at one time, uh, but it is it is the fastest way. It look it looks it looks horribly slow and like overly convoluted, but it is the it is the fastest way. You will slip off a lot here if you if you do it a lot. And don't be sad if you fail this a lot, because even the top players get a consistency of about one every 20 runs for doing A1 parkour. Um, it's it's definitely fast. It's definitely the preferable option if you're going for a world record, but it's hard, so, so don't be surprised if you fail a lot. Anyways, 
whatever you've done, uh, we'll pretend that you did the, the sort of wall jump buffer hoodad over here. You collect the jam, uh, collect the jam, collect the sigil, and then you'll want to walk out. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to pause and restart checkpoint. The game loves to remind you that you can hold X to reset, but this is how long it takes to reset when holding X. Snore. The, it's horribly slow compared to pausing and restarting checkpoint. This is the most important thing in terms of menuing, is learning how to restart checkpoint very fast. Um, you just pause and you kind of move the mouse down and click, and then it looks trivial, but it's 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 uh, especially for a beginner. It's a very difficult sort of thing to to get good at to to really nail down as restarting checkpoint. Uh, don't be surprised if you if you check your achievements a lot. Uh, don't be surprised if you try to stop the game. Uh, uh, it's it's gonna happen a lot is missing. Even even top players, you'll note in like world record runs, I can almost guarantee that every single time someone restarts checkpoint, there there's at least one example of someone hitting achievements or one example of someone not stopping their game. It's a hard thing to get down, but if you get it down right, it saves you know a lot more time over doing it slow like this, right? Over the course of this run, it might be 10 seconds. Over the course of all sigils, it might be minutes. But it's something that, no matter what you're doing, in terms of, of this game, whether you're doing any percent, whether you're doing all sigils, whether you're doing community percent, you're going to do this a whole hell of a lot. Uh, there's very few exceptions to not restarting checkpoints, unless categories that are defined to not restart checkpoint. So get, so get good at this. Learn how to restart your checkpoints properly. So now we're in this, this A1 hub area. Let's go do people. There are three three sort of main strats for people. Uh, I'll walk through intended real quick because uh, intended is ind indeed an option. It's not a bad option. It's just a slow option, but it is an easy option. There's no there's no sort of risk in taking this. So you just get the sigil this way. You have a much easier, well not easier, but much faster but still easy option. Uh, you have a parkour option, so we're going to do something called an item jump. Uh, get, get comfortable with this because you're going to do this whole lot. And you'll notice that this bit of geometry here has a, the uh, sort, of, sort of thing that we've seen earlier with the parkour. It's got this sort of ledge, but we really can't get onto it without, uh, without a bit of additional help here. So we're going to use our jammer. To push us back. You'll note that the jammer sort of pushes you back when you instantly drop it and also has collision when you walk into it. So if you go back into this corner, sort of angle yourself back, click and then jump, you'll just pop up on top here. Uh, do this do this action a lot because uh, you do this a lot in the run is, is something called an item jump here. This is this is a particular example where you sort of pop up like uh, terrible jump version two. This isn't this isn't that bad. This is super easy, especially on 60. Um, from here you can do sort of fancy buffer jump parkour. It's hard and dumb. Uh, the, if, you, if you don't want to do that, just jump over this purple barrier and uh, navigate your way through these walls here. And then sort of jump onto the sigil from here. There's a third option, and I'm, I'm actually going to take the time to, uh, to, to lose a bit of time here. Uh, normally you wouldn't jam that mine there. Normally what you do is you just run over, collect the, the uh, collect the, the jammer, and then you just run over to here, and then do a version of Terrible Jump version 2 that gets you onto the wall, pick up the jammer, pick up the jammer, and drop. And this is super fast. This is the, the fastest option. It's also bad because it has to do Terrible Jump version 2, and then you, uh, you drop jammer twice. You have to pick it up while the thing is sliding, I don't, know, I don't know any other way to, to to demonstrate it. Yeah, so it sort of slides down, you have to pick it up again, so it's like click, click. It's definitely a timing sort of thing. Uh, we will be doing this again, so... Uh, and it, it will be important, but it's a lot less difficult than this example. It just happens that the, the first jump here requires something like Terrible Jump version 2 to get up onto. Uh, anyway, we get this, we, we get this uh, yellow T, restart checkpoint, Next we'll be going to only the two of us. There's really only two strats for this. And um, the, fir the first one is sort of the default option, obviously. It's intended. 
Intended is slow. Even if you're a super beginner, don't do this because you're going to have to do item jumps at some point. Uh, and the fast strat for this is perhaps the easiest item jump in the game. Uh, but you can do intended. Intended's fine. It, it, it works. It, it's fine. But you have a much better Shining Knight example. Pick up this jammer. You'll see the same sort of geometry as, as people before. It's almost like they use the same geometry in many places. Item jump. Pick up jammer. Jump onto this wall. This is this is a bit hard. It, it, it's actually surprisingly hard as a, uh, as a beginner. But uh, it, it'll be fine. Just don't worry about it. Just do it. Uh, jump into here. Jam the gun. Collect the sigil. Pretty easy. Restart checkpoint after collecting the sigil. Pick up jammer, and now we're gonna run over here and do a double item jump. This is this is uh, this is fun in its own special way, uh, like that. You you have to do this. I mean, there's if you're doing any sort of any percent run, this is necessary uh, because you otherwise would have to collect sigils, uh, more sigils than you need. This this is easy, and this saves three sigils. So, so just just learn how to do this. It's it's uh here. I'll I'll try to describe. So it's click jump, um, click jump, click jump, and and so on. So click jump, click jump, click jump. Okay. Uh, it helps if you hold backwards into this thing. It it boosts you up a lot more than if I don't hold backwards. Uh, I don't even know how to do this without holding backwards. Uh, just just hold backwards. It's it's. It's the, it's the best option, it's the way to do it. So anyways, now you uh, have a jammer, and you're on this wall. You don't need the jammer, put it in the party pit if you want to. This is the party pit. Uh, you'll know why that name is once you start running this game. Uh, next we need to get on the walls here. You can walk off this and just make it onto the wall. This is super easy, this is super free. Don't, 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 uh, don't overcomplicate this by jumping like I usually do. Uh, the other option, of course, is to do insane parkour. You don't have to. It saves a minute amount of time, and it's a lot harder. Uh, but if you're going for world record, do that sort of stuff. Anyways, so we're on the wall. Make it over to here. And now we're going to leave Trio Bombasticus. Now, if you're a beginner, you're going to want to re-enter Trio uh, and do this strat. Um, you can do intended. I'm not going to show intended. Intended is, is ultra slow, and that's time that we're, we'd be wasting. Just do, again, you'll notice, very familiar geometry. Make it on these walls here. I'm going a bit fast on these walls, but you'll learn how to do this eventually. Jump onto the sigil. However, if you want to save a bit of walking time from restarting checkpoint, uh, you can leave and not re-enter and do, I, I don't know, even know if we call this anything, uh, it's, it, it's just a thing that you do. So you'll notice that there's a bit of curvature here, there's like a, there's like a bit of a hill here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is near the end of that hill you're going to jump, get onto the slope, and then sort of run over here. Let me, let me just demonstrate it here, if I can get it. This is still hard, this is, this is not easy, um, top players will mess this up. So don't be surprised if you do. But you'll kind of like roll up this slope. You can even you can even clear it sometimes. You'll roll up this slope and then turn inwards, and now you'll be on top of this. So now you'll be on top of the walls outside of the level. This has a, a benefit of when you collect the sigil. By the way, if you miss this, just do just do that strat. That's totally fine. So you make it on this wall. You drop onto the sigil. When you restart checkpoint, you won't be in the level. You'll be out here, which saves a bit of walking time because next what we'll be collecting is poking a sleeping lion, PASL. Um, for a beginner, again, there's a pretty default strat here. Uh, it was intended. Um, I'll show you a bit of a, a shortcutty version of intended here, just because it saves a, a minute amount of time over the actual intended, which involves walking around the back and, and dumb stuff. But uh, we have the technology to do better, so you'll note we'll restart from here. You want to encounter this sort of geometry. If you did the beginner parkour from before, you'll recognize it. So make it on top of here and make it to the middle. And then you'll want to buffer jump off of this pillar over to this pillar, which looks something like this. <laughs> and, I, and I messed it up. This is this is hard. This is, there's no there's no if ands or buts about it. This is. Definitely a difficult strategy. 
I I wish I could show this better. Um, yeah, there you go. So that that that, that looks co cool, but you'll see that I, I messed it up twice in a row. Um, even in the tutorial sort of setting where I can go slow, I can slow down and so on and so forth. Just imagine me trying to do a run. This is this is a, a spaghetti fest. Uh, it's it's not easy, and it, it merits a lot of practice. And don't be surprised if you mess it up. It's it's much like that sort of slow jump over here. There's a lot of strats in this game where if you mess it up, it's totally fine. Everyone messes it up just as much. But anyways, you'll make it over to here, and then you just drop it. And That's all we need to do for A1. Congrats, you've done your first part out of uh, maybe five for this enemy so you walk into this this portal and then you're going to turn into A3. From A3 you're going to take a hard right into AEP, uh, an escalating problem. So you'll note here when I when I immediately enter that we have a problem. This mine is is a bit of a is a bit of a stickler and we're not allowed to get our jammer that we want. So instead of waiting for the mine like I just did if you immediately enter an escalating problem, which I'm, I'm taking forever on, you start checkpoint and then run forward, we can just barely squeeze out the jammer and then go over to here. We made it. So now we have a jammer and we didn't have to wait for the mine. Uh, this is a, a sort of common theme. You'll see it again in A6. No, A5 rather. My bad. We'll see it in A5 again. Uh, there's a reason I'm not showing you intended. Intended is slow. It's, it's really slow. It's bad slow. Uh, and compared to how easy this is, um, there's really no sort of mention of, of doing intended. So I'm going to first show my way. I have no explanation for how this works. It just does. Don't do this. Um, it is an option that is available to you, but uh, it's just... I can't explain why it works. It just does. And that's the worst sort of setup for anything. So in case you want to be insane and try what I'm doing here, I managed to, to get it once, let me see if I can do it again. Yeah, there we go. Um, if you want to try that, go ahead. Uh, thank the lord we have Senon. Uh, shoutouts to Senon, he's a, he's a big uh, 60 FPS runner like, like myself. Um, he came up with the setup for this, so what you'll want to do is hold backwards into this corner, drop the jammer, and then you'll notice uh, really any angle from like here to here will work. It's it's if you have the the corner that we're backing up into be like slightly left of center, that's good enough. There's a lot of leniency on how well this works. So now we're going to hold left and then the series of moves that we're going to do is we're going to jump, let go of left and then hold jump for a buffer jump and it should work every time to land on there. Now, you'll you'll see I messed that up and I'm not super good at this, but uh, with practice uh, this is this is super free. And I'm not making this look uh, quite as yet easy, but there you go. And this this is actually very easy uh, compared to my setup, which took oh I don't know 20 hours to learn. I picked up and watched Senon's video, and I did it first try without without even really thinking about it. That's how easy this is. Um, so I recommend that you do that. Um, I will link in the description on the off chance that I do upload this to YouTube. Um, Senon's video on this, he probably explains it a lot better than I do. Um, but this is what you'll want to do because now we're on the walls and we're in here in the sigil area and we don't have to mess around with keys or more mines. That's, that's all to the wayside. We now have the sigil, except we have to be a bit careful because there is indeed a turret here and this turret can kill you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very convincing on this sort of point. I know the sigil is to the left. Don't turn left. So the, the ladder will immediately position you forward. You are going to hold forward. The moment that you hear the sound of the sigil sort of clicking in, making that thunk noise, you're going to pause and restart checkpoint like this. It sounds like we're being shot, and it sounds like we're not going to get the sigil. But we've got it. We clinched it. Easy. Make sure to go forward. Even go a bit to the right if you have to. Do not go left. Don't don't go left. Going left is is death and pain. Anyway, so now that we've restarted checkpoint, we leave and restart checkpoint out of here. You want to turn around. Uh, as a minor sort of thing, you'll note that if I restart checkpoint, you can immediately turn around behind me. So like I'm facing this way after turning, but you can you can turn around mid sort of 
popping into existence. It's a minor sort of save, but it's a it's a nice predictive thing that you, you should do every single time. So next we're going to lock me up, swallow the key on the USDK. Just, just, just go over here, jump onto this bit of geometry, uh, jump over here, and then jump over to the sigil over here. This is super free. This, this is so beginner. I'm not even uh, gonna gonna waste time talking about intended or anything. Intended is boring. Just, just don't. Walk onto the set of rocks here. Jump onto here. Jump onto here. Now this is an easier version of of, uh, of a certain wall that we'll encounter. Um, I'm gonna put a tutorial on how to jump onto the walls like this because you'll notice this is again that same sort of geometry, but we're jumping out of the wrong corner. This corner is very particular about how it how it accepts you standing on it, uh, and this will become a sticking point later. Um, I'll I'll show a tutorial later. Um, perhaps the most important thing if you don't watch the tutorial, don't sprint. Turn, turn off sprint, stop holding sprint, whatever, to jump onto this wall, and it becomes a lot easier. I don't do that, because that's not what I learned, but I've, I've seen how easy it is for other people. Um, it, yeah, just, just don't sprint and you'll make it onto here. Anyway, so now we have the sigil. We're done. We're going to be able to collect the connector now, so restart checkpoint. So now there's something about leaving levels. Unfortunately, in more modern versions of the game, um, you don't instantly start going away. And actually, you'll notice, if I don't touch anything, I'll just be standing here. Uh, it sort of makes sense why they wouldn't have you immediately teleport away, but it's it's sort of a pain as a speedrunner to have to, to leave. So here's my timing on how this works. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to restart checkpoint, and then we're going to listen for the computer. And when it makes three beeps, we're going to wait a little bit longer, and then we're going to jump. And that should be good enough. So, so listen close. And then we leave pretty much as fast as possible. There's other setups that other people use. Uh, just, just pick your own. It doesn't, it doesn't super matter. I know Cyro does a jump buffer sort of method to, to get out as soon as possible. Ask him about it. Um, Everyone else has their own sort of feel for it. Uh, just ask around if it ends up being a problem for you, because I know I just asked around what, what it did for me and someone gave me that setup. Anyways, so now we're leaving A3. Let's unlock this connector here. This is the optimal solution. You're going to pick this one up with right click and this one up with right click. And it gets you connected. Restart checkpoint. And now we go to A5. There's two sigils that we need in A5. And, um... Both of them aren't, aren't too, too big of an issue here. So if we're going over the fence, you'll notice, uh, why do we have hexes? We aren't supposed to have hexahedron. Hmm, uh, let me see if my allow mechanics, ah! I must have entered that in on accident, my bad. Um, so yeah, you don't normally have this hex here, but you do have connectors. So there are things that you can do with connectors to make this easier. Um, according to Senan, uh, what you'll do is you'll go into here, you'll jump, and then you'll buffer jump to make it easier. Uh, to hold hold backwards and make it onto this geometry. Um, like that. Um, hold backwards into it. This is, again, sort of an item jump. If you, if you want to do this over the other method, this is this is how you would do it. You would um, hold backwards into this corner. You, you can't do it for too long because it's a corner, so it's unstable for holding backwards. But you, and then you... Uh, you click jump and then you hold jump again and it, it should buffer you. I'm not too used to how this works, so if this works for you, that's totally cool. This is not what I do. Uh, I'm gonna adopt the strat. Uh, has has a rather uncouth name. It's called Easy Wall. Uh, what you do is you stand under this this. Uh, pardon my French. Uh, if you stand under this area here and jump into this, this is this is a, a much harder version of Lock Me Up Swallow the Key that we saw jump into the corner here and you land onto it and and even with how much I practice this this is just bad but that's totally fine um practice this a lot there's a reason it's called uh easy wall quote unquote it's it's ironically not easy wall and that's technically not the name for it but don't bother learning the real name that's anyways um <laughs> so, you, so you make it onto this wall here congratulations you you've learned pretty much the hardest part of this game is is doing this jump here from here, there's two things that you can do. Um, the 
easier strategy just to sort of negotiate the walls over to um, that sigil over there, I believe. Let me check real quick. Uh, that math makes sense. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you, so you would, um, as you saw, you just kind of jump over there. Um, there is a very slightly faster method where if you're starting back here, you can make a run up and make it onto here instead of walking around these walls. And then you just sort of parkour into the sigil here. Restart checkpoint, and now we're going to leave and go to uh, Friendly Crossfire. Friendly Crossfire, again, has a mine cycle that we need to be aware of, much like an AEP. So when you enter, you restart checkpoint, you run over to this, and you jam here. Now, it's it's a uh, it's now a, a waiting game with this mine, and you'll you'll see. Here's the, here's the easy way to do it, right? You need to jam this as soon as possible after restarting checkpoint. The the window's sort of small. Now we can wait for this mine, which is the the slow way of doing this. And you'll note you'll note what what I do here is I set it up so that I have the I have the. Uh, the pressure plate activated while I'm jamming this. Which is really the only way that you can do this, especially without having a hexahedron. So then you just walk into the sigil area. There is a faster method that saves maybe four seconds. But it is it is very touch and go. So jam this. You go around here. And of course, I messed it up. I was supposed to wait for the mine to, to blow up the turret here. So again, when I say touch and go, I mean touch and go friend. <laughs> There's a reason I don't do this. Uh, so we're going to wait for that to go, and then you'll want to... Okay, I messed it up there. So you go around the mine like that, and it's obnoxiously hard, and it kills so many runs whenever I've tried it. Um, anyways, uh... That's a party. Uh, I'll do this real quick. I know this is... Oh. <laughs> so you'll see that the, the mine was leaving as I left there. Um, I'm holding the zoom button to, 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 to sort of show that. Hmm, I've lost my touch. Anyways, let's, let's, just do, let's just do the good old method of, of wait for the mine. This is not an obstacle I was expecting. Whatever. Haha, -ha, we've done it just as fast. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Collect the sigil, whatever. Ignore ignore what happened there. Anyways, so we've collected the sigil. We're good. And again, we, we use the, the computer system, as we saw there. So now we're going to go to A6. Uh, the only even number in the world. Uh, so now we go over here to Bichromatic Entanglement. There are, again, three sort of strats with this one. Uh, each of them in varying difficulty. First, I'll show the semi-intended method. Um, you can also do intended, but intended, again, is slow and dumb and stupid. So we're going to stick this here, and then we're going to do the only example where a barrier glitch could come into, into account. So you'll note here, there's a, a sort of obvious sort of structure here, this blue thing. If we are standing on the right side of it just next to it and we pick up the connector we get popped through with the connector anyway which lets us do this whole sort of thing uh, if you don't want to do that that's totally fine the other two methods are just as sufficient but this is the easy way to do it is is to uh, set yourself up uh, right so then we click the sigil uh, and then restart checkpoint there are two other ways to do this uh, the old traditional way is to pick up the connector. You'll note that there's this sort of rock formation that's got this big black line on it. There's two of them in a row here. You, you can pick either one, it doesn't really matter. You do an item jump up this one, you kind of shift off to the to the right so that the wireframe is down here, and then you pop up here again. You, you walk around this sort of geometry, jump through here, buffer jump through here, land on the sigil. There's a, there's a third way, which I'm not too practiced in. I, I learned about it recently. You do the same sort of thing on this geometry here. You jump up here, you jump up here, and actually you grab that connector instead. And then we're going to do three buffer jumps across like this, which I promptly messed up here. Uh, 
Okay, this is hard. Uh, this is, <laughs> as you can obviously see, this is this is difficult. This isn't super easy. Uh, I think it's something along the lines of jumping on the barrier and making it cross. It's parkour. It's hard. It's practice. Um, let me see if I can actually like demonstrate like a good method here. If I can't, that's totally fine. It's not it's not the end of the world here. But this is the faster strat. Uh, if it turns out that I totally take a mulligan on this one, which I might, <laughs> um, watch watch a run by anyone but me, because apparently everyone else has learned about this and implemented it in their runs properly. Let's pretend that we made it onto this wall here. Buffer, buffer. Hey, we did it. We got the sigil. Anyway, restart checkpoint. Now there's really one way to do ADF, ADTF, and it's this this old sort of connector way. We we uh we make it up onto this wall here. Again, uh, we go through here. You'll note that there's this sort of structure here. You walk through the the right side of it. Uh, off the top of this rock, you can jump onto onto there. You can also sort of do a bump jump if you're gutsy. I am not gutsy, so you just do this. Um, you'll note that this thing is downward sloping. If you wait too long, you'll you'll not be able to jump because it's a downward slope, and downward slopes like to do things like that, like pretend it's not ground. So do a bit of a run up and then jump onto here. Uh, this is again something that that does require practice. And then um, you can either sort of jump around the corner here, or you can just um, negotiate the walls here. And then there's there's two ways to, to go over these fences here. There's the guaranteed way, which is sort of jumping over these fences sort of super awkwardly. Or, uh, since we're at 60 FPS, we can uh, guts the fences over here and just kind of make it over. 99 out of 100% uh, red. 99 out of 100 times that you do this, this works. There, there is every, every so often, I can't believe that I got it on, on uh, in the tutorial. You will bonk here because you're a bit too far to the left or to the right. Um, and that sucks, and that ruins the run. Uh, but it's very rare. I swear, I swear, me getting it in this tutorial is is almost sort of a godsend in how it, it, it demonstrates. But for the most part, you should be able to make it across. If it happens in a run, don't blame me. I warned you, this is indeed a risk. So now you just grab the sigil. And that's it. We're done with sigils now. Just restart checkpoint. Do the whole thing with leaving. So now we're going to go over to the elevator. This is the optimal elevator solution. Right click to pick up this one. Everything else is left click. You solve the, you solve the door here. And then we're going to do something called elevator glitch. We can trick the elevators into giving us a checkpoint a little bit earlier than it should. Uh, but it involves uh, being a bit weird with the elevator here. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to click this button. And then while it's clicking, we're going to spam this one. And I spam this for a lot longer than anyone else does. You'll notice there's the sort of circle in the lower right corner. That means you got it. And that means that you, you pop up here and skip the whole uh, elevator sequence. I'll demonstrate it a couple more times. So you click the button of the, the level that you're on, and then you spam the, the, the level of the button that you want to go to. And you'll see the symbol in the lower corner pop up, indicating that now it's saving a checkpoint for you. you restart checkpoint. And... You're done. So now, now we're up here, and we're gonna make our way over to the tower. So, this this is uh this is where the run uh, gets kind of serious here. So uh, hold on to your butts. We do another elevator glitch. We start checkpoint. We go left over here. To solve this, you double right click, and then right click to pick up the two. Uh, Zeds. We start checkpoint the moment that the door activates so that you don't have to wait through the door animation. Run through here. So there's a couple of ways to leave with a connector here. You can, and I found this out recently, you can just do the solution, which is, which is not, it's not a cool option, but it's definitely an option. It's available. You do this, this whole sort of thing. And then if you're if you if you're super careful, you just kind of walk through and and sort of walk into the the terminal here, and that counts as a solve. And haha, 
I have bested you, game. I now have a connector where I shouldn't, even though you technically should, but whatever. Um, another super easy way is to just walk around here and then go to the left. There's a, there's a massive hole, which, which indicates that it's sort of intended, you know. Um, we have the connector here. There's a third way, which is a touch more precise. Uh, you'll note when I pick up this connector, there's this sort of barrister. Uh, there's this wall behind here, you'll note. There's the fenced wall, and then there's the wall here. They did their best to close off this gap, but they didn't do good enough. So if you walk around here, uh, slam into the wall over here, sort of sort of tap, you will occasionally see it. Now, w you know, washing over here and, and trying to, to nail this correctly and then saying, oh, I saw it, clicky. It's not going to work, uh, especially with like my current position. So the way I like to do it is to spam click and E, and then sort of slowly sweep over, and you'll pick it up and, and drop it eventually. Uh, some some runners are super good at, at like just kind of slamming and clicking. I'm not I'm not too good at that. So there there's my there's my tip for that. Anyways, you have a connector out here. We're going to use this connector to do some nefarious things, and this is the point where choosing between messenger and eternalize is up to you because at this point between messenger and eternalize they are the exact same however if you want to do fast eternalize we're going to do something a bit different uh, and there's actually a slow eternalize which i'll demonstrate just for the sake of, of demonstration so we're going to start with messenger because messenger is the standard category it's the fastest category it's the one everyone doesn't consider to be a meme so when you're leaving here you're going to want to jump uh, over this this railing in between these two windows I missed it that's fantastic um, if you do miss it you can still do eternalize the fast way um, but it's not it's not the best option in the world um, give me a sec let me let me do this again this isn't this isn't as hard as I as I've made it out to be oh yeah that's right hold on I completely messed up the uh, the setup here let me let me uh, make an addendum here. Not these two windows, but this window and this barrier stern. So you want to run into here, and then sort of <laughs> run in the corner. It's been a while since I've done this. Shut up. It's fine. We'll make it. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to jump into here so that we land on top of this floor here, which isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Well, let me demonstrate that a couple more times, because uh, as, as was seen by my incompetence here, yeah, landing on the on the railing there is usually a bad thing. Um, so do your best to to not do that. This isn't free. This isn't easy. Uh, there's another way where you just kind of clear over here and make it onto here. I know Blix does that. Uh, that's probably easier, but it's not faster. Uh, it's 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 the slower option to just kind of make it over to here. Either way, you'll want to make it on top of here. And so now we're going to do the 60 FPS connector clip. Uh, found very recently. Shout outs to Nozu. Senon has a setup for this, which I'll, I'll demonstrate real quick. You'll notice on this texture. Oh, uh, if you aren't at lowest graphics, this probably won't work because the, the setup for the texture doesn't quite work. So you'll notice there's three vertical lines. You're going to want to line up with this first one here. So we're going to kind of shuffle and shimmy and tap our way into lining our cursor up with this first one here. Then what you're going to want to do is turn over here and you'll notice this group of dots. Pick this one on the lower left. You're going to click and hold backwards. And this will do this will do most of the clip for you. So you'll notice in this example I haven't fully made it. So I'm still holding backwards by the way. I'm going to slightly turn to the left and then turn to the right. Uh, but backwards. Um, and that'll that'll clip you out into here uh, into into Magic Land. I'll I'll demonstrate this a couple more times because this isn't intuitive. This is this is weird even even for uh, super old players of this game. Again, you'll want to click, pull backwards. Sometimes the connector pops you out. Other times you just kind of have to negotiate your way backwards. This is 100% consistent, and this is amazing. There is a clip on the right side of this. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't know how to do it. Um, you can watch Cyro. I think Cyro does it. Maybe Kraft in his world record they do right side clip because you land over here so you might as well try to set up a clip over here. Uh, it's definitely harder and it's definitely not quite as convenient. So anyways, let's, let's clip into here one more time. 
not convenient. It's definitely more convenient, but it's regardless. So you click, go backwards into here, and then you kind of pop your way through. So now we're at the the end stage, and you have two more places uh, that are sort of sort of touching. So uh, I will quickly demonstrate the quick thing about having your CPU speed be, be low, and that was that was not cool. Having your CPU speed set to low uh, lets your your render distance be close enough to see this texture without zooming in. Um, so you can you can see this texture and sort of line up with it as you need to. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on lowest because this is what everyone else does. So there's an easy setup and then there's a fast setup. So you'll see what I just did there. Hold on. All right, slow down. So there's a lot of invisible ground here. Uh, for the most part, as long as you kind of just walk around here, this isn't going to be too big of a problem. There's not really any super magnificent holes except for like this elevator here, which you don't want to fall into, by the way. It's 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 bad news if you do. So jump over onto this texture over here, and sort of walk around this corner, and then if you look at this texture here on lowest, there is a bump here. Hold on, let, me, let me zoom in here. There's a bump here and a bump here. You're going to want to line up with this bump and then you'll note that you can see the pixels on the top texture there against the white background. You want those all to be like straight for the top. Like like you want to be approximately going forward. Tap forward and you'll land onto this sort of scaffolding railing here. The other option is to not do that, to zoom in and you'll want to go slightly right. You'll notice that there's this repeating texture here. There's this main sort of bar. You want to go slightly left of that and tap onto it. And if you don't screw it up like I do, um, you will make it onto here. Um, and this is definitely something of, of practice, of which I haven't done. Um, so you'll sort of tap onto here, and you'll make it onto here. So from here, you have one last shot to do Eternalize, although it is a slow version of Eternalize. Um, first we'll do Messenger, which is the super easy way of, of getting out of here. So you've made it on this, this railing, congratulations, you just have one more awful jump to make. Which is not super awful, there is a wall here, so, so mind, your, mind your headroom here. You're going to want to go off of here and jump around like that. If you make it into this room, you're done. This is, this is it. Make it into this, this portal here. Sprint forward, and then any of these that you click, you make it. Um, the best one to click is the first one, but if it would turn out to be slower to click the first one somehow, I'm not, I'm not too sure. If, if like you're, you're trying too hard to click the first one and, and it just doesn't work out, and don't click the first one. Just pick any of these. It doesn't matter. Just click any of these, and that's the game end. And you get the the magnificent. Super 100% ending. All that, all that sort of jiggity jazz. But let's go back a bit. Let's let's rewind. That's that's messenger. Messenger's fine and messenger's cool, but messenger isn't the bestest thing. So let's go pick up a connector again, and let's get back all the way back to the point where we could have. Could have made that last decision to do Eternalize. It's a super free setup for Eternalize, which is, is kind of shocking. Um, we'll, we'll demonstrate the clip one last time, because it's, it's fun, to, fun to do the clip. Um, again, line up, mind your textures. I didn't quite get booped in once again. Okay, this happens every so often where you you turn too far to the left and you get popped out. Don't do that. Try to try to try to do your best to to not do that. I was just trying to go too fast like a moron. And uh, really, the main rule on this game is sometimes you got to go slow to go fast. So be careful. Line up with this. Here we go. So then we pop through here. Uh, we do the whole thing. I like this setup better because it's nice. Uh, don't do that. That's that's why you gotta be careful around that corner. Uh, <laughs> I'm showing all the mistakes. This is how you do the tutorial. So there's one last thing that you can do to do Eternalize. Uh, this is the slow way. If you've really like gotten to this point and you're like, hmm, I want to do Eternalize, this is like your last shot. You'll notice with this, this sort of scaffolding, there's this big line here. 
if you if you uh, if you do like slight taps so that you're in like the middle of that ish yeah like that that's that's close enough and you make it face forward and you do a sprint jump off of and just keep holding forward you will land on this thin sliv uh, sliver yeah thin sliver of, of ground that's still technically out of bounds in sea walk walk by the way yeah this is floor uh, walk over to here there's one last gap here so you just kind of want to make a random jump over here and then if you just walk into this area at all and walk forward congratulations you have done the eternalize ending however that's the lame way to do eternalize that's the indecisive way to do eternalize let's do the real way to do eternalize here so again let's restore this back up let's uh let's fast forward a bit let's let's uh let's cheat a bit today all right so oh sorry <laughs> i cheated a bit too much um let's say you mess up this jump or whatever you're stupid like me and you, and you mess it up when trying to you know do a tutorial or whatever and you and you make it down to here you're still fine you can still get a good run out of this and actually this is what you'd want to do is is uh if you're aiming to do an eternalized sort of run you're gonna want to kind of just make it over here and do your best to not get caught in the barrier or whatever maybe try to boost off of the stairs or the rock or or any sort of thing that you want to do there anyway so you, you keep going over here you're gonna go next to the a building over here and there is a there's a choice bit of geometry we are going to hold backwards and clip through here this is the other way you do a clip um, this is a lot more obnoxious this is the choice of eternalize if you're doing 15 fps and you want to go super fast but this is also super fast for 60 fps eternalize from here don't bother with the connector it's more more bother than it's worth you're gonna want to stand let's see yeah like approximately over here you'll see that there's this straight line over here this is this is my jump list set up for it at the very least you see the straight line go a bit more forward and then aim for that corner hold forward for one two let go and if you're not stupid how did i mess that up that's free um <laughs> i'm sorry i uh let me, let me demonstrate that again one more time here uh, it's actually a lot more freer than, than I made it look. Oh, did I line up with the wrong straight line? It might be this straight line. All right, let's say it's the straight line. Line up with that corner, hold forward for one, two, and let go. Just jump, just jump. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done Eternalize. You can probably watch better tutorials. I will definitely have them linked in the description and if possible, annoying annotations to remind you that this sucks. Anyways, eventually you'll figure out uh, through through due process and timing that you can land on this side here. And again, you can walk into Eternalize this method. And um, This is the reason why you'd want to pick Chinese real quick here. Uh, click Use. You'll notice there's text on the screen, and we're waiting for it to scroll. Chinese has less characters, so this saves about a second. You want to hammer enter as fast as you can, by the way because you'll hit the button as fast as possible. And that's it. That's that's 60 FPS. So while I've still got you, um, while I've still got the time, while it's still cool to do, um, I'm going to turn off cheats, and we're going to do a messenger run real quick just to show how everything works. I'll do my best to do super fast sort of sort of commentary through it. It's not going to be the best run. I'm not going to have time run for... For a very good reason. Um, so we're gonna start a new game, e, and we go. So I'm gonna do half clip here because I like half clip. Half clip is my is my uh, uh, weapon of choice. All right, make it over to here. I do OLB because I'm not gonna bother with inconsistent things like A1 parkour. We make it all the way over here. We're gonna do the the whole sort of thing with the jump. I'm gonna click the sigil. Very good. Make it all the way over to here. Uh, do the reset for people. I do the uh, wall method of people, and I kind of keep it safe. But I, I, uh, I take, I take my risks if I'm, uh, if 
I'm going to do something that I think I'm going to do the PB for. So instead, I'm just going to keep it consistent, keep it cool, get the sigil, go over here. I'm going to run over to only the two of us. We're going to pick up this jammer and do the item jump as described earlier. Like so. Pick up jammer. Not mess that up. Jeez. I, I thought I turned off sheets here. Let's, let's actually turn off sheets here. Um, walk over to here. Again, if you mess up the strat, you can just... Uh, we start checkpoint, but I guess I, I, uh, I essentially had cheats on. We're gonna do the item, double item jump here, holding backwards because backwards is fast. We're gonna walk over to this wall over here. We're gonna go through here. We're going to do the slope jump version of TV because that's fast, and really it's not that difficult. Walk through over to here. Hopefully we don't mess this up so we don't have to do the intended. All right, we do that, and then we do PASL parkour. Hopefully not messing it up because it is indeed slow to mess up. We now have all the sigils for A1. Fantastic. Good speed run. Next, we're going to make it over to A3, uh, picking up, first of all, of course, AEP. AEP being quote unquote difficult strat. Uh, I'm going to do my own difficult way of doing this because it's just the way that it's been ingrained within me. Go over to here. Uh oh. There we go. Alright. Drop that. Go over to here. Again, as you saw, I restarted and everything was fine. And I have that sigil. Go over to LMUSDK. We're going to do the, uh, the easy wall quote unquote jump here. Uh, now, you saw that the, the geometry is a bit boostful there. I was going a bit too hard. So I slipped off, but that's totally fine. We start checkpoint. We're going to jump. Now we're going to go unlock the connector because unlocking the connector is. is basically as fast as possible it is from there because that's just how the routing works don't worry about it and also just in case i really need to get um you know you mustn't cross the streams correctly um i can always opt to try to do the the uh connector corner jump here but instead we're going to do easy wall we're going to jump all the way over here to collect the sigil we're going to restart checkpoint we're going to leave and go go over to friendly crossfire we're going to restart we're going to jam the thing here we're going to wait for this mine to go because as we saw in the tutorial, I'm not too good at doing the, the fast cycle strat here. We're going to collect the sigil here, we're going to restart checkpoint, and we're going to leave, we're going to restart checkpoint, and we're going to jump. And that's A5 done. We're going to next go to A6. A6, of course, is, is pretty easy. Um, I'm going to do my old set in stone ways of doing uh, the bichromatic entanglement jump twice in a row, uh, which is totally fine. That's not slow or anything. Um, it's just not super optimal, which is, you know, it depends on your needs. I messed it up there, which is because I wasn't shift over to the right enough. I'm going to walk all the way over here. We're going to collect the sigil, and then we're going to restart checkpoint. We're going to do that whole thing again, but we're going to do a door too far, which is always a bit of a tense but clench sort of moment because messing this up is a lot of time loss. But I'm gutsy. I'm not gutsy enough. So as you saw there, uh, you know, missing the parkour. This would be a reset at this point. But for demonstration purposes, this isn't demonstrating my actual skill here, which is totally fine. So then we're going to guts the fences, pray to the Talos Lord. And now we have the, all the sigils that we need. Restart everything. We're going to leave. We're going to crack open this gate here. Nice. You can stand further back in the elevator if you want to. I know Cyro does. It's slightly faster, but oh my gosh, it turned around. You're not supposed to turn around after that. Um, there is a faster way to do the elevator glitch, but I don't have the mental slash uh, and uh, hand-eye coordination for that. That's my sort of demonstration for it, but it's slow. Anyways, we restart. We're going to unlock the floor one gate. We're going to double right click for that one, single right click for these ones, and bam, that's our floor one door. We're going to jump through here. We're going to grab the connector this way because it's simply just fast. It's not anything where we have to walk through the entire level or nothing. Nice, we picked it up. Uh, didn't have to do a bunch of spam there because my position wasn't too trash. We're going to hopefully land on top of here. Nice job. We're going to go over to here. We're going to line up with the line over here and pray. I mean, there's no praying. There we go. So I popped there through first try. Very nice. Uh, we get we go through here. We see this little bump here. 
land on the scaffolding, go all the way over here, and that is a messenger, any percent 60 FPS run. That's it. So you saw there was definitely parts where it's it's uh, it's unsharp. It's there's a lot of places where mistakes could be made, uh, and I've been playing this game for 500 hours. So don't sweat it if you mess up things. Just play the damn game. Do your runs. Do them right. I believe in you. Uh, but if you don't believe in yourself, talk to members of the community. There's me, Gally, who does a lot of weird 60 FPS stuff. If there's a strat that you think might be possible in 60 FPS, talk to me. Because I know oh, so many weird 60 FPS strats. Uh, talk to Senen if you're looking for setups. He's the setup master for 60 FPS stuff. If you're looking for something that you feel is a bit inconsistent, he might be able to come up with something. If you're looking for 60 FPS all sigils, talk to Skizzy. Uh, he's one of the main champions of 60 FPS all sigils. If you're interested in doing 60 FPS transcendence, talk to Darkhead. Um, he's he's one of the main guys for transcendence. And if you're looking for super ultra good runners and maybe their tips on the super hard strats, you'll be wanting to talk to Exto Dasher, Syro, or Kraft. And if there's anyone else that I didn't mention, um, they're probably not too big on the 60 FPS thing. They're not too keen on it. Uh, but there's guys like Ninja. There's guys like Apple. Um, there's Hubert. Uh, there's there's plenty of members of the community. And I'm going to feel bad for, for missing a bunch of them. But uh, talk to whoever you need to uh, learn this game. This game's fantastic. Uh, uh, hit up our Discord. We're cool. Just ask for the Discord link and we'll, we'll hit you up with that. And uh, yeah. Yeah, just uh, just uh, keep it cool and stay in school. <laughs>